Hello everyone, today I'm going to be tying a bloodworm fly. It can be used all year around in both rivers and lakes, wherever there is a silty bottom for the worms to grow. Now, few anglers seem to use bloodworm flies, but they have a place in everyone's fly box. Because a bloodworm is in fact the same insect as a chironomid buzzer or a dry fly midge. But before the insect becomes one of those, it is first a bloodworm. So you can find and use bloodworms wherever you use buzzers and midges. And they are particularly effective in winter when, without other insect hatches, they become a staple food for many fish. Now I've made this video following a request on one of the Facebook fly tying forums. So, Georges Devant, ich habe dieses Video für Sie gemacht. Now let's begin. Now the hook that we'll be using for this fly, for demonstration purposes, is a size 12 Camasan B830 Trout Lure Long. You can tie this fly down to size 18, uh, and you need to adjust the size of the beads accordingly. But I will do this one in size 12 to make it easier to see on the video. The thread that we'll be using today is a Uni 80 in red. And the first thing that we do is lay down a smooth bed of thread. It's relatively important that this is smooth because it gives a good bed for the beads to sit. And we can, as usual, just use the tag of the thread to help guide our turns. And this fly, we want to come, I know from experience, slightly past the barb. Rip off our waist, come back to the head of the fly. Now this is actually a really good fly for beginners to tie because it's both very effective, but it also practices a lot of the core skills of tying on and doing a whip finish. And the next thing that we actually do at this point is quickly give the hook and the thread a whip finish so that we can take the hook off and mount the beads. Now, the beads that we'll be using on this fly are a Miyuki size 11.0. And here is an example of some of them in the various different colors that they have. And you can adjust the size of the beads according to the size of the fly. And for a realistic size 18 fly, I will actually use the 15-0. And today we will be using the Miyuki in flame, silver and red. And we'll be mounting those on the fly. Having mounted the beads on the hook, we can then put the hook back in the vise and then push all the beads to the back. To give you a feel for the different sizes, here is another fly that I often use in winter. It's my version of a free swimming caddis. And what we've got here is the fly in size 12 using 11.0 beads. And this is a much, much more life cycle, life size version here, size 18.0 using the 15.0 Miyuki beads. Having got our beads onto the hook, we then tie back on at the head. And the next ingredient that we use is a Veniard's Flexi Floss Super Stretch Floss in red. And we tie that on to form the head of the fly. Just a simple Pinch wrap, three turns, take off the excess, The next ingredient that we'll be using is a ostrich hurl. This is dyed scarlet, it's a toral. If you want to make the fly in the smaller size, down to size 18, you will actually need to use a colour extracted and red dyed peacock hurl like this. That's more the size for size 18. 
but we'll start off with the ostrich hurl for this larger fly we'll take an individual piece of the hurl we'll cut off the very base which is a little bit thick and not very easy to work with quickly tie it on and give ourselves one two three turns at the head of the fly with the peacock curl take it off at this point we then whip off our thread again you can see that I'm running it back so that I don't cover the hurl itself and then I slide up my first bead to cover everything there we go tie back on again reattach the hurl you'll notice I've attached the hurl well clear of the bead I then wind backwards once two three times to the bead and then hold the peacock hurl out again tying it down that means that my tying down points will always be under the beads when I slide the beads forward and it gives a nice even gill effect so tie away from the hurl and then slide up the bead to form the next body segment and we carry on doing this for another two to three body sections depending on the size of the fly now I like this fly for several reasons firstly it's a very very bright fly I can be confident that the fish will see it in murky waters and on a dark winter's day. Secondly, it is actually matching the hatch. It's not like the bright artificials that you sometimes see used for newly stocked and rather stupid fish like boobies, blobs or FABs. This fly will actually take resident fish. Now, thirdly, the next thing I like about this fly is that it really has a lot of life in it. First of all, it's got the head and the tail, which move around in the current. Secondly, the slightest movement in the water will set the gills moving and give the fly the appearance of life. And then finally, of course, there is the beads. They give the fly quite a lot of flash and they mean that the fly will quickly sink to the bottom into the fishing zone just above the river or lake bottom uh, which is where the bloodworm are and where the fish in winter will be found. Now you usually fish this fly slow and deep in winter and the bites are often subtle or very quick so you need to be vigilant and pay attention you need to strike at the slightest sign it's now november here in the uk as i'm tying this fly and i had three fish out on this pattern yesterday in less than an hour which just shows you how effective a fly it really is. Now, we change the order slightly as we come to 
the very last segment of the fly having tied on after the last bead the next thing we want to add is the tail which is also made out of the red flexi floss so quickly tie that on making sure that it's nicely sitting on the top of the hook and now we come back we tie in the ostrich hurl for the very last time and we use this to cover the area where we tied in the tail Now at this point it can be quite hard to reach the back of the fly so I will quite often use a rather larger whip finishing tool just to put in the last tie and I usually put two in just to make sure that the fly holds and lasts. And there we have it the winter bloodworm make sure you've got a number of these in your box whenever you go fishing in winter tight lines everybody mm -hmm.